Good afternoon, everyone. It is now 4.30, as opposed to what the clock back there says 4.31, but we'll get that fixed. So, uh, welcome to the, uh, it's on. It's on. Hello? Yeah, lights are working, but nobody's home. All right. Thanks, Dennis, appreciate that. I'll just holler. Okay. Well, welcome to the uh, October 24th meeting of the Moorhead Public Service Commission. Uh, we've got several items to start to get through this this afternoon, so why don't we uh, why don't we get a good start? Um, uh, are we anticipating a later arrival with Chris, or is she? She's not going to. No, she it. wasn't going to be here today. She's missing today. Yep. Okay. Okay. Good deal. All righty. Well, then we'll call the meeting to order. Uh, I would entertain a motion to approve our agenda. I move to approve the agenda. I'll second it. I have a motion and a second. Um, all in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. We have that accomplished. Off to a good start. Uh, I would also entertain a motion to either approve or change or whatever it is that your pleasure is on the consent agenda. I'd like to make a change and take uh, item 13 off the consent item 13. agenda. Item 13, okay. Add that back in. And with that, then I would approve the uh, agendas. Okay. Any other Post. any other comments before we move on? Okay, we're good. Okay, so we have a motion. A I second, second the motion with the revision. I have a motion and a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. All righty, we're good on consent. Let's move down to. Um, well, we'll move right into customers to be heard because I know I have at least one guests that would like to come up and, and visit with us today. So uh, if you would come and identify yourself, tell us who you are, and, and we'll be glad to listen for a bit. Hey, good afternoon. I'm John Larson. I'm a resident of the city of Moorhead. In addition to that, I'm the plant manager of the Pactive plant out in South Moorhead. Good so day, I, John. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate the opportunity to be in here today. I just have a few comments. Um, if you might know that uh, Pactive is the second largest electrical user in Moorhead, and I think we're in the top five in water. Bill, you'd have to probably clarify that for me, but. Right. You're up there. <laughs> We're up there, yeah. <laughs> uh, first of all, I want to thank you for the assistance we received from Warhead Public Service. Uh, we, had, we recently had a very severe water main break, which uh, affected our entire office and into our facility. And the water guys from Warhead Public Service, the, the assistance we received was exceptional. I want to thank you for that. So second of all, I wanted to also thank you for proposing a zero increase on electric but I'd like to also ask you to take that a step farther. And the reason I say that is when we look at um, the other plants in our Pactive network, comparing from 2007 to today. So the Moorhead Public Service rates have increased 61.8% since 2007. Our plant in Macon, Georgia, which is served by Georgia Power, has went up 11.4%. And we have a plant in Red Bluff, California, that's served by PGE, that's actually went down 13.9% over that same time frame. So initially back in 2007, more public service rates for us were very competitive in the Pactive network, but now where they're at now, we're not so much competitive anymore. And more recently, we've had a new uh, competition come up in another state very close to us who has a six cents per kilowatt rate. And uh, with the proposed zero increase at about 7% still, they have a significant cost advantage over us. So I'd like you to consider that as well. And I guess the last thing that I talked about this briefly last year is the city transfer fees. And when we look at 20.5% uh, that's been over the last couple of years, that's significant for us. So at Pactive that represents about $560,000 that we contribute to that, where the national average and what we see is about 5.5%. So. I'd like to thank you for your efforts so far, but I'd like to encourage you to also see what more you can do. So is there any questions for me? Anyone up at the desk like to visit with John about this? I have, I've asked John uh, already this afternoon, we were visiting before the meeting got started, uh, for an additional time uh, to, to come out and visit the plant uh, to, to meet. It's been a few years since I was out. Yeah, um, I would love to host a visit. That'd be great. And we could we could continue the conversation. Um, sure. I, I guess, you know, from, from my standpoint of having been here for a little while now and participating in what has been the, the early work in in discussing transfer and yeah. our relationship with the city and our and our uh, liaisons with the city, 
Uh, I, I hope you've noticed that we've 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 started to make a little progress on that. You know, it isn't it isn't the pace that it was there for some years, and yeah. and we have we have work to do. Okay. Admittedly, we have more to do. Um, the new city manager, not so new anymore, almost a year on board already. But uh, the city manager and, and we have, have talked about this. We realize okay. that there's more conversation for us to have to deal with, um, you know, a, a, a situation that has 40 plus years right. of history. And so we're, uh, we're aware. Okay. And, and the conversation, I think, has gotten off to a good start. But it's, it's going to be... It's, it's going to take some work over some years yet. Okay. Uh, but I appreciate your remarks. I, I know that they're of concern to you and your leadership. Okay. And uh, we're going to continue to do what we can to, to figure out how it is that we pay for stuff around here. Well, please let us know how we can help. So, yeah. You bet. John. And I'd like also to thank John for his time. Uh, we had a chance to meet. And he expressed several different things. First off, about how they appreciate doing business in Moorhead. Yeah. I think that's important to know that the company uh, has uh, committed to the city, but they also here are in a competitive world. And when you look at the other costs of the other areas, they are under pressure to be as profitable if or not as the other locations that they have. So I think it's important that we have our users share that information with us and we'll do it wherever we can as in our best that we can to try to keep you as competitive as possible. Okay. Thank you. Absolutely. So I have one question to Bill. So how do we compare to a six cent per kilowatt hour if you look at our industrial rates? I think, I, and I'm looking at your uh, slides that you had provided before, and yeah. you were talking about seven. It's, almost, it's six, nine, yeah, almost seven yeah. percent, or seven cents. So I mean, and that, you know, all depends on load factor and, you know, right. the ratio between uh, demand and energy, that type of thing. So, I mean, we've got some, uh, we, you know, we'll take a look at that. In fact, that was one of the things I was going to tell John, because uh, you said, you know, how can you help or we can help. Yeah. Uh, next year, we will be doing an electric cost of service study, just like the water cost of service you're going to hear from Tim Miller uh, tonight. Um, we're doing the electric one next year. Okay. And we tend to do that every five years. Uh, four to five years, probably. I'm not sure when the last one was. Three. On yeah, wa water we have to do it by seven. Electric we have to do it by five uh, years, and uh, so electric is next year. So keep your ears open. We'll be talking to you, but you know you're welcome to come and listen in on what Tim uh, uh, has to say about. Okay. Tim is behind you there, but. Okay. Uh, um, you know, it's a pretty technical study. We try and make sure that our rates are equitable, equitable between the classes, and we do have to cover all those expenses, including the sure. transfer that you mentioned. And that is a big one because it's it's 20 plus percent. Yeah, well, with 30, 30 plants in the U.S., we can have a lot of data to, to help you with that study too, yep. in comparison yep. to other facilities. But yeah, I mean, uh, you know, we've worked closely with Pactive for yep. all the years you've been here. You're right next to a major substation that we have, so we're trying to provide you with very reliable power yep. at a competitive rate, and uh, really appreciate you being in town. Yeah, thank you. John, maybe uh, one more question. Uh, more from the economic development side, and, and you know, not particularly utility, but workforce issues. Um, as, as you look at what you're trying to do with, with this plant and yep. addressing costs like electric and, and, and water and so forth, uh, how are, how are we uh, responding as a community to, to to your need for hiring folks? That's a huge concern. Uh, we John our, John and I talked about that a little bit too. We have 160 employees. Yeah. We run 24/7. Um, our workforce is is very varied. If you want, if you would say that, we have a lot of refugees and new Americans, which we would supplement our our workforce. We love having every one of them there, uh, but availability is huge. We've had to recently raise our uh, starting rates for our, our oncoming temps as well as with some of our other ones just to stay competitive in the market. Really? So, yeah, yeah, that's a huge concern for us. Yeah. As it is for an awful lot of employers in the area. Yeah. We need yep. people. Yep, for yeah. sure. Yeah, okay. All right. Well, any, anybody else? No. John, just thanks thank again you. for okay. coming to thank see us. Thank you for the thank time. You. Appreciate yeah. it. Thank you. you bet. Yes, sir. John. Um, I think we have a couple of people like to speak and they're not aware as far as 
you can speak at this time, uh, but it's if you have electrical comments, do at this time, and then during the water hearing. Yeah, actually, you know, just so. just to get technical, you know, since we have no rate increase proposed for electric, we're uh, we're only having a water hearing tonight. So, if uh, if if there are any other comments from anyone else in the group, Bruce, uh, you'd be welcome to come up now. Thank you. Yeah, the hearing technically is a is a water hearing, so we'll get into other stuff right here where it's just kind of a free for all. Beautiful. Yeah. I'm Bruce Beckeris. I own A1 Automotive in Moorhead, Minnesota. We're unlike Pactiv, we're a small business. And I too have a few questions about electric rates and, and where we're going, and we're thrilled that they're not gonna increase. So I like that a lot. Um, and I just had a, a conversation with the Bright Energy Solutions people this afternoon, and we had a long discussion about what the rate I pay at uh, over 25 kilowatt user, and you know, the rate is really good. And yet the, the demand charge is not so good. And of course, when I look at getting in the, under the 25 watt, and then I look at the rate I'm gonna pay, and I start pushing the pencil to it, it's not gonna really be that much different. <coughs> you know, the rate is the rate, and we're, we're pushing numbers around, and, and there's a big number, and there's a small number, and there's a charge on top, and it's hard to, it's hard to understand what it is. And, and through businesses, through the more Business Association, and through EDA, since I'm a member of EDA, we talk about, how the transfer works and what what does that mean to attract businesses? And the big comment I wanted to make tonight is that I think that we should put a way, put together a way that we can understand this better. How is it really working? What does the tra what does the demand charge really mean? And what does it mean to have your average use? You know, when is the demand in effect? What is the average time frame that is? You know. One of the things that came up in the discussion today was, if you left your lights on more, your average cost would go down. Yeah. I'm thinking, well, that's smoke and mirrors. Isn't that you got a lower <laughs> rate, but you're gonna be able still gonna be yeah, higher. So the car running all night. You yeah, know, just leave it run all better, gas. better mileage there, <laughs> hot dog. Yeah. So anyway, I'm just thinking that in the near future, we should come up with a plan to have some kind of, whether it's a video presentation or what it is, how does demand charge work? How does all the small businesses in Moorhead, like over 110 of them in the old industrial park, mm -hmm. how can they understand what this really is? What is the demand charge? How is it affecting me? Am I getting a good deal or am I not? You know, I right. never thought that when I got my power bill and it was $1,000, I would think that's a good deal. <laughs> you know, you know, and my, when I came to my old building, but of course you build a new building, and my old building had 40 light bulbs in the shop, and my new building has 270. Yeah. Well, the world changed, mm -hmm. you know, and yet when I'm trying to find an energy solution to drop myself below 25 kilowatt use, I'm sure not. I'm not even sure I want to do that. Right. Because I'm not sure I want to get into that other rate mm -hmm. for my use. Mm -hmm. well, it's hard to understand. So that's the only thing I wanted to bring up. I'll, since uh, Bruce brought it up, I'll uh, do just a jump in two minutes uh, little synopsis or not even synopsis. I'm going to be just a little, here soon, anyways. So yeah, just a little education for you know we've got a couple of new commissioners too that haven't heard this, but your intro was great, Bruce, uh, and I'll give you a, a continuum of uh, users because you're both in the audience here. You've got one large user that is on 24/7. So they, they came on some time ago and, and their uh, demand, right, just goes steady. Every day, 24 seven, their demand through time just is the same all the time. Uh, your, well, I'll, I'll go to the other end of the extreme. We had a customer uh, in North Moorhead. They basically did pancakes, it's a, a club. They do pancakes in a garage that has a meter uh, and they, fire up some electric grills, and so that thing comes on one Saturday every month, and then it's basically zero for the rest of the month. And then they come on again at the end of the month. They're, and everybody looks at a kilowatt hour rate, and we do it too. We just talked about six cents versus seven cents per kilowatt hour. Um, but this demand is in kilowatts, and and, and I know I'm going to get a little bit too deep here, but if you're if you're Pactive, you take all those that kilowatt charge, which is for this, 
you know, and then they've got all these kilowatt hours that they used, and then we divide it by the kilowatt hours, and it's, it's a six cent rate or a seven cent rate for them. This, this grill, these grills that come on once every month, their kilowatt hour rate is probably 60 cents per kilowatt hour because their demand charge was, you know, because they turned on all those grills and then they didn't use anything for the rest of the month. But we have to build the system so that, so that uh, all the transformation, all the lines and everything uh, can handle those grills coming on. And so they, they pay a demand charge because they're gonna pay z almost a zero energy charge. And then you're kind of right in the middle. Uh, you know, you come on on Monday morning and you stay on pretty, you know, pretty even during the day, go off at night, and your kilowatt hour charge is probably 10 to 12 cents. Yep. And, and you know, and that's the, that's the basic uh, slideshow, if you will. Yep, and m like my business, we have air conditioning in the shop. Right. So my techs get to be air conditioned, which is really rare. Mm -hmm. But we have two big air conditioners. We used to have one air conditioner that had to run 24 seven all the time, 24 seven, and you could start at 65 in the morning and you could be 80 at night. And we got our second air conditioner and we can turn the air conditioning on at 9.30 in the morning and we can shut it at five. So we use way less energy, but guess what our demand did? Yeah. Yeah, see, so yeah. then that jumps your power bill. So you can see a two grand power bill for air conditioning five days a month. Right, so that's, I mean. That's painful. And you talked with Bright Energy Solutions and Dennis Eisenbrown, you know, to try and figure out a strategy. And really that is what you have to do because a person has to get educated on their energy use. That's right, that's and, right. You know, and uh, I mean, Dennis is available to talk and Bright Energy Solutions can provide, you know, like a lot of times there's rebates because you want to put in the most efficient one you can. Cause Absolutely. Because it, it, is, it is costly. So, well, but yeah. I just think it's a big deal when we start talking about it. Even we just had this discussion this week at EDA and about how it works and, and somehow to understand what it means at the end because it's easy to say kilowatt hours and, I know, and these things, but when the demand charge enters into it, all of a sudden it's a real fuzzy. It just turns into dollars. It, it's, it's a little bit chaos when you're trying to figure out and then at the end of the day you write the check and be done. Yeah. The last thing I'll say is in the electric industry, the uh, trend is to go to demand charges for everybody. And the issue is exactly what you're saying. They look at their bill and they say this demand charge, that's just some extra charge they're getting me for, right? And, uh, you know, I don't know if it's gonna get to that point. I mean, it'd be easier if everything was just one kilowatt hour charge, but that's not probably realistic and it's not the trend. Sure. So, I mean, there is going to have to be a lot of education on what, what are all these charges on my bill. All right. Well, I want to say that the power at our new building from our old site is unbelievable. What they, what Board of Public Service did to put the infrastructure in so lights don't flex. So, I mean, we use power. There's no yeah. doubt about it. We're a small business, you know, and, and we use power and there's no, there's no dimming of lights. There's no, it's solid. And, and the service is great, so thank we you. can't say enough about that. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it, Bruce, thank you. John. Um, Bill, you might not like to hear this, but I think I'm more confused after your explanation. <laughs> <than I was. laughs> I know I am. So, so with that said, I think we want to emphasize the request that we need uh, a system in place to be available to our users so they can understand how their bill is calculated. So we'll get on we top can of put that. that on a strategy or put it on a, our agenda or whatever the yep. case, because I I'll think have he Dennis, makes a very I'll good I'll have point. Dennis come up next time and do a primer on it, you know. No, we'll kidding. see if he does, yeah. He, right. He'll put on his professor hat and come up and well, educate I, you. Thank you. I, I have to tend to agree with John that, you know, we, we get to talk about this every once in a while as a board, and you know, we all still don't understand it. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, I, let alone the public really trying to, to dive in and understand it. So, if there are other tools that we can come up with media-wise and 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 so forth in order to 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 make sense of this for folks, I think that's going to be very helpful to us. So, so moving on. Uh, anyone else that, that wants to be heard during this portion of the meeting? Okay. 
Then moving on uh, to old business. Generally, we have some old business to, to take care of. There's always a question. And John usually is the one with the question. I will. John. I had a, a constituent stop by my home here, and uh, he had asked me if I would pass on a message to more at public service that says that the garbage trucks are leaking oil and it's damaging the streets. I said, that's not public service, that's a city. He said, no, you need to talk to public service. <laughs> so okay. twofold here. Uh, I think that's a city matter as far as in Ridge, Ridgewood, and I walked to the area that he pointed out, and there are a lot of oil being spread out on the streets, and he said that's probably not the best thing on new asphalt. The second thing is that I think we need to really come with a better solution as how we can educate our citizens and our users what's more at public service and what is city. Because if, and he was adamant that this, the garbage trucks are more head public services responsibility. And I think there's a lot of those other things that people are confused about, so I don't know how to do that. She's oh, hiding oh, behind oh, the pitcher. Oh, I, I don't know, I don't know the <laughs> she's, she's ducking behind the water pitcher. I don't know the answer, but I'm just, I'm just passing on the, the request that he had, and he was, he was a concerned citizen, which is good, we'd like to hear that. But it's, it is what it is. I think that's a concern on the Okay. Very good, thank you. All right, any other old business? Hey Heidi, on that note, I love my recycling bin. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> I'll pass that along. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. I do too, but it gets heavy. Those big bins uh, with, with everything combined. Well, what are you putting it, in there? Uh, everything, <laughs> <laughs> darn near everything. You know, it's amazing how much we recycle and how little we throw away, but, but that big bin can get Mm -hmm. Can get full and heavy. It's probably the wine <coughs> bottles. The what? The wine wow, bottles. Wow, yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the neighbor that does that. Yeah. Right? You know, they're just bringing them over from someplace else. So, yeah. All righty, we're going to rearrange a little bit here because uh, our hearing isn't scheduled for a while yet. So uh, if we could move on, maybe. Do we have time to do. Um, uh, is, is, the, is the water presentation part of the hearing process nope. or can we do that? We can do that now. So we could do that now? Yep. Okay. Why don't we do do the water presentation? Then? What item nine? Hmm? What, item nine first? Nine. Well, we could do reports, I suppose. Reports, I mean. Your report's oh, yeah. going to be brief tonight? Yeah, mine's brief. It's yep. Kind of quick and then we can talk about whatever else yep. is going yep. on. But, okay, Bill, let's do reports first and then we'll go to water. You might want to do city council first. That's all right. I don't have any report. No report? Okay. Well, enough of that. <laughs> Public Service Commission, anyone from any of your committee effort? <coughs> We're going to talk about budget anyway. All righty. Then, General Manager, you're up. Uh, the only thing under the uh, written report, I think, is to uh, uh, take a look at item number three because we're trying something a little bit different, doing uh, some dashboards uh, instead of the longer reports that you might have seen in the past uh, with, uh, with some narrative, that type of thing. We're, we're putting, trying to put together some dashboards. So if you've got some ideas on what you'd like to see, just talk to me or talk to staff about it. But under the, uh, it's got the third quarter dashboard report, uh, financial summary, and there's a lot of information. That one is just numbers, but there's a lot of numbers in there and it gives a good idea of this quarter to last quarters uh, and, and this quarter, this year to last quarter, or the same quarter last year. Um, we might get to the point where we actually have some graphs and that type of thing that would help show trends and those types of things. But just so you know that there's a little, you, you might see a few different things from us, but that's one of them. So that's all I really had for my report. Reactions? I like the dashboard uh, as, a, as a concept. It, 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 we'll, we'll see what we develop as, as a tool, but I do like the dashboard as opposed to the to the pages and pages of just columns and numbers. Um, you know, we, we can all sit individually and work out our own interpretation of those columns and so forth, but if we're looking at a dashboard that has some commonality to it, I think that'd be helpful. So I'd look forward to that. Yeah. I mean, we spend three months really looking at a lot of numbers in our budget process. So if you like lots of numbers, you know, get on the budget committee. 
but for a snapshot every quarter, we thought, let's try a dashboard, figure out how we can make it most useful for the commissioners. And so if you have ideas on that, sure, tell us. We're trying to minimize the number of pages you have to go through before meetings, so. And we're really trying to put ourselves in your shoes to, uh, you know, what would I want to see if I was a commissioner type of thing. Dave. Yes. Thank you. I do. Uh, I had a quick thought. You are, we're talking about dashboards, and then I was thinking about uh, Mr. Beckeris's um, concerns about being able to understand the bill better and what demand charges are. Is the bill, do we have a billing system, or is it possible to look into a billing system that might be able to give customers a dashboard on their use and when they're, when they are using the most electricity, um, the most water, and then there can be explanations about certain things on that bill. Um, have we looked into that, or are there best practices that we could look into to see what other cities might be doing? Visuals are really yep. educational yep. rather yep. than text. Yep, yep, that's exactly what we're talking about. Um, and we have looked at it from time to time, and there are probably some evolving best practices, um, especially with mobile devices. Yeah. There's a lot of new uh, information that's out there. Okay. Um, we are looking into, because it has to really start with our metering system, and I mean, we will be looking at over that the next few years. In fact, you know, Missouri River is gonna do the water cost service study, Tim Miller is here, and Missouri River as a group is looking at um, how we can do automated meter reading or meter infrastructure, they call it, um, to get to that uh, best practices. And we're probably gonna be looking at it with the other 59 regional utilities that we deal with so we could do something um, you know, economic as well as mm -hmm. you know, educational. Mm -hmm. Because that's always the concern is how do we get this information and keep the cost down in doing it? So we're looking at doing it jointly. So, good question. Thank you. The bill does become quite a uh, menu of items, and some of them are city, and some of them are yeah. we're in public service. And I, I think I, I like the idea because yeah, the format's always been a problem. No. All right. Um, okay, Ralph. Say, how many of our customers actually do uh, get physical bills anymore? How many do we have that actually get electronic bills? Is that number going up? On oh, the number. If you have it for another meeting, just yeah. I would like to, like to see how many we, we still ship out. Seven? Seven, yeah, I thought it was under 20. I oh. mean, it's actually not as, as uh, prevalent as what you'd think. Yeah. So they still go, do get a paper bill. I mean, maybe we should make another push to actually get rid of that, that paper bill because it's cost, cost production, cost of mailing them out, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yep. Okay, thanks. Moving on, um, we've all seen report number two on the proposed 2018 budget. Do we need to discuss anything there? Shall we get her done? And then we can we can go right into the water presentation. Okay. All righty, I'd uh, accept a motion to approve report number two on the proposed 2018 budget. So moved. Second. Second. Got a motion and a second. All approved or uh, all. Uh, uh, are you in favor? Well, you, there's no discussion. You already told me there wouldn't. <laughs> you want some discussion on it? I, I'm open to discussion if anybody else oh, has okay. specific questions, but if not. Not here. Any None discussion? here. None here. None here. So I have a motion. Do I have? And a second. We've had discussion now, briefly. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. We've accepted the report number two. All right. Let's move right into our water presentation. You need about 30 minutes or so? That, that would get us right to where we're going for our, uh, our hearing schedule. So. Yeah, we'll, we'll cut Tim off at 5.30 if we need to. Good. <laughs> Sounds good. Okay. All right, let's move right into that then. Oh, thank you. Oh. Thank you for being here, Tim. 
Thank introduce you. yourself, let the folks, uh, especially in television land, know who you are, because you're just going to be a voice for a while. Okay, so yeah. They won't well, even be able to see you very much. So. Yes, name is Tim Miller. I'm from Missouri River Energy Services. We are one of your power suppliers. And as one of the services that we provide to our members as our rate study program, and so we've been doing these rate studies for Moorhead uh, all the way back to 2002 with the first electric study and then the first water was in 2004. So very much appreciate the chance to be back here again and to kind of see some of the changes that have occurred over the years in the rates and obviously update those rates with uh, current projections. So that's what I'll be doing tonight. And I'll be going through a PowerPoint that I think is being loaded up, or maybe we have that already. So I'll kind of walk through some of the highlights of the study. The staff has reviewed the uh, report in detail, and we've also met with the budget committee to kind of go over some of those things. So I really want to provide some of the highlights. Again, some of this will be covered in the rate hearing as well. So I want to bring forward some aspects that, um, that may not be included there that are key to the water rates. So some of the study highlights then, we are proposing overall increases of 5.3% per year for the next four years. Uh, we really want to emphasize that those percentages are averages and so each customer or customer class might be, see something slightly different than that. Um, but overall, those are the revenue increases that we're proposing to meet the costs that you're going to have over the next four years. And so we've done some very detailed projections that you've probably seen in the study and so we've incorporated those projections from staff in terms of capital expenditures and debt and so on. Some of the reasons for the increase, uh, the one big reason that we're going to spend a few minutes on is minimal sales growth and so we're projecting only 0.2% growth in water usage over the next four years. And so obviously with expenses going up by more than that, that by nature is going to put some cost pressure on the utility in any industry that is not seeing much growth in sales is going to then have to make up the difference in the price that they charge. Um, uh, as far as capital expenditures, you've got a, a very ambitious program of investing in the system, replacing old water mains and, and new water towers and, and other things that you've got planned, a very detailed plan that we've put into the study and so that is incorporated as well to make sure you're covering those costs. And then as with any other utility, you've got normal cost increases which are averaging about 3% per year. As far as the rate details then, you uh, implemented seasonal rates in 2013 and that was in response to a state of Minnesota requirement that you have conservation rates. So that was put into place in 2013 to meet the requirements of the law. And for residential rates, you've got the individualized goal rates. So that's all been in place for a few years and we're not recommending any big changes to that to continue those rate designs that we started back a few years ago. Uh, you also have had a phase in of the fire protection charges that are billed to collect the cost of providing fire protection to the city which is really a city function and so those are broken out to kind of show that part of the cost that the city um, would have incurred um, with the hydrant fees but instead that isn't a separate charge that is being billed to customers. And then the other uh, change is just to merge the meter charge for 5 eighths and 3 quarter inch meters and so that's a common practice in the industry. Um, residents have either, uh, new homes all have the three quarter inch meter, so that's really the new standard for any new homes and so we're kind of moving that direction anyway. And then we'll show you some rate comparisons to show that you are below the medians for residential and industrial customers, so even though you are seeing some increases, other utilities are seeing the same thing and your rates are still quite competitive. <laughs> Spend just a minute on this chart. There's a lot of detail here and, and hopefully you can see this, but uh, basically looking at water usage from 2006 to the current time and then project it out. The uh, first bar, the blue bar there is residential apartments and the second, the commercial and industrial bars are uh, in the green. Both have declined quite a bit over these last 10 years, overall decrease of about 13% over 10 years. Again, this follows the very standard industry trends. Your residents and your businesses are both seeking ways to become more efficient with their water usage through obviously residential. You've got dishwashers and um, washing machines and so on that use high efficiency, less water. And so that trend is continuing um, on the business side as well. Some of your key industrial customers have done a lot to try to reduce their water usage. So that's all being reflected here in the numbers and so that's all a good thing in, in many aspects operationally. It delays the need for new plants and new expansion there. Environmentally, obviously, you're avoiding treating that water probably twice, you know, in terms of the water and then the sewer. Um, and customers are saving money as well. However, it does put a lot of pressure on rates and so that's the other element that we're seeing here is 
Uh, again, increasing costs, but the billing units are flat or going down. This is even more compelling. You can see on a residential per meter per month, this is going back about 20 years. You can see on average, residents used about 725 CCF per meter per month back then. We're all the way down to about 525 now. So over that 20 year period, um, you can see a, a huge change. Occasionally you have a spike. You can see in 2012 was a dry year. So you have a, a one-time spike because of the irrigation. And that does highlight the irrigation impact on the system mm -hmm. when that does occur. And so it's good from a water utility mm -hmm. perspective of more sales, but obviously um, the trend is flat or declining usage per meter per month for residential. So that is all being factored into the study. And again, one of the reasons why we have to look at making sure we stay on top of rates to, to collect what you need to cover your costs. As far as the breakdown of total water costs, 43% going forward will be capital expenditures and debt. Of that, actually 20, a little over 20% will be debt. Um, but again, a lot of investments being made in the system to improve the system, improve the reliability and the quality of the service that's being provided. So I don't see this as a negative. Obviously, you're just spending money on, on staying on top of things. You're hearing across the country that a lot of utilities may not be staying on top of capital improvements, and you see what happens when they don't. And so I think you're being proactive and uh, trying to catch these things and do the things you need to do over time. Tim, a question that occurs to me is, you know, I mean, the, the trend line that you were showing just a couple slides before, um, I, historically, it, it, it indicates that we're putting ourselves out of business, basically. Mm. You know, um, and, it, but we're not. Um, but we're depending on utilities, this, this isn't backsided, Heidi, at all. We're depending on utilities to pay other bills for communities as well. And it's a declining revenue line. Mm -hmm. And what, what are other communities doing to, um, to make sure that, that water, and maybe electric, but we're talking water now, to make sure that the, the water utility, the water infrastructure stays sound if, if it's that much harder to, <coughs> to charge for it uh, in order to, to, to keep to keep the system strong, it 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 it's all it it, it would a appear that it almost needs to be subsidized, and I would imagine in much smaller communities it does. Yeah, I think you're correct on that. Yeah, property taxes would subsidize water. Yeah. 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 Okay, and that's what they're doing basically through property taxes. They're yeah, they're yeah. supporting so it in addition to their their customer fees. Yep. Okay. Or some of the water operating expenses get absorbed through financial accounting through other utilities and things too, that happens as I well. See. So yeah, that definitely is, is things. And again, it's different by city in terms of how they've yeah. set up to, to handle the financing, but smaller utilities definitely, that yep. would go on, so yeah. Casey, we lost the slides. Let me go forward, well, maybe I get it back here. There we are, okay, thanks. Yeah, yeah. No, that's a good question. Um, so, but the point really is that there's a lot of fixed costs here that need to be collected whether your sales are high or low in a given year. So we're really trying to emphasize that in the rate design because again, 20% is debt service. The capital expenditures also kind of have to go on no matter what. Salaries have to be paid. You can see that's about a quarter of the cost. You've got the 14% is non-variable operating. Really the only piece, uh, well a couple pieces, but the 13% there is the variable power and chemicals. That's the only part that really directly varies with the volume of water that's sold. That's a very small part of the total. Purchase power, as we'll see next year, could be 50% or more of the total that can vary with power sales, but in water it's very small. Transfer is the other piece obviously that varies with rates and with revenues because that's 5% of, of revenues, but still it's that very small piece there that can change. So. Mm -hmm. As far as looking at net income of the water utility only, so this is just highlighting the water utility. You can see in red there, the red bars, if you were to not change rates over the next four years, income would drop off to about 200,000 by 2021, and so you'd you know, basically have no income at that point. Not to say that you're gonna let that happen, but we wanna kind of show you those numbers to kind of really support the reasons why we really need to look at some increases over time to make sure that income remains at the levels that you've expected in the past and that you need to have to fund all those capital expenditures that you have. So again, this kind of highlights that. Under proposed rates, you can see in blue there, you'd be at levels that you've been at most years other than 2014. As far as cash reserves, uh, one of the benchmarkings that's been targeting by the, targeted by the uh, commission is to have 
uh, a proposed policy of 225 days cash. And so that's really one of the targets in trying to put the rates together and the plan is to make sure that cash is staying at that level. Again, it's very important to have cash with some of the things that could go on in the system and some of the needs that you might have to make sure you have that reserved so that if you've got a year that's uh, very wet and you, your sales drop off, that you've got that cushion there to make sure you're doing what you need to do. So you can see in the blue line there, your cash would remain just above that target of 225 days. Under red, obviously, you would be at a deficit position by 2021, so. Looking at area utilities, we're tracking about 50 area utilities in the middle bar there on average, or the median is about 53% of cash and revenues. So about a half a year revenues in reserves is really the industry benchmark for that. You will be at 41% of revenue, so just underneath that, but I think you're in good standing here. Some of the large utilities tend to have a little ca less cash in relation to reserves, but certainly points out that I think your policy is reasonable in terms of the levels that you're going to have going forward. If we make all the changes to the infrastructure, is there a need for us to be even at that median level at all, or can we go further down? Um, I still think it's important to maintain that level just uh, for the financial benchmarks for Moody's and so on to make sure you're uh, maintaining your rating and just the financial integrity of the utility. Um, yeah, I think, I think that's going to continue to be a need and it would allow you then the flexibility that in the future if you have some cash you can pay some of the capital expenditures from cash instead of always issuing debt, mm -hmm. which could come at a lower cost for your utility as well. So you've got a nice mix of debt and equity funded and I think you want to continue that over time. So. Good. Thanks. So these are actual percentages, won't read through all of them, but really want to highlight the fact that they are going to vary by class slightly, but most customers are going to get right around that 5% increase overall, give or take a little bit. Um, industrial is at 4.4% per year, so they're going to be slightly underneath that average over the next four years. Um, Dilworth also is a little bit less than that. We do a detailed cost allocation, which we reviewed with the budget committee and with staff to kind of uh, collect the costs that we should from Dilworth and not more than we should. And that's really spelled out in the contract to make sure that they're paying their, their fair share of costs. And so they're going to see about 3.3% increase over these four years. And all of this is subject to change. Obviously, tonight we're just here to approve or to look at 2018 rates. You'll have to look at these rates again over the next three years to make sure they're still meeting your needs. Uh, the next slide then looks at the proposed customer charges by meter size. So again, you have these differentiations based on the meter. Um, residential would typically have a five-eighths or three-quarter inch meter. Some of your industrial customers have four, six, or eight-inch meters. So they're going to get a bigger charge because, again, they're having a lot more volume of water coming through their meter. And because it costs more to provide that uh, service to them than it would to a small meter. So that's really what is reflected here. You can see the current rates in the first column. Cost of service is based on our allocations, what the targets are for this study. And again, we're really emphasizing putting more recovery in these fixed charges so that you make sure you're collecting your costs, debt service, and so on, to make sure that these are collected in these charges and, um, and you have more revenue stability going forward. So that's really what we're targeting here. So one common question comes up is that why are these increases more than 5%? The 5% is an overall revenue increase, but individual charge components might be more or less than that but the total customer impact is going to be in that 5% range, give or take. So just want to clarify when you see some of the dollar impacts to some of the charges here, of why they might be more or less than that percentage. Uh, looking at the average volume rate then for the quantity of water that's used by the customer, again, the first rate, first column is the current rates and then the cost of service column indicates where we're trying to get over four years with these rates. Um, rates vary by class, and that's based on usage patterns. Again, we do some detail allocations to look at how much the summer usage varies from the rest of the year, and so that's why you see different uh, rates by class. Industrial gets a lower rate, uh, which is also occurring in some other utilities because of the fact that their usage is steady, much like we talked about with the electric a few minutes ago, the industrial usage is flat throughout the year in, in most cases, and so they're going to get a lower rate than some of the other customers. So again, this is all based on uh, industry guidelines of how these cost allocations should be done. I won't walk through all the rates. You're going to see this here in a minute with the rate hearing, but these are the changes we're proposing for, to the rates over the four years. And so, uh, again, for the most part, we're continuing with the structures that you've had in place. So no major changes here in terms of shifting from 
the current structures, you've got the seasonal rates in place plus the goal rates for residential customers. Finally, the fire protection charges that you have would also step up and you've had a phase in of these charges which began in 2013 and so this would continue that process to collect the cost of providing fire protection in these charges by class. I want to end with just a few rate comparisons. We like to take about 10 area utilities and kind of compare where you're at and I know you do some of your own comparisons for residential. <laughs> this first chart, and I apologize if it's a little bit small, but this is a chart of residential usage. Uh, so you can see in the red bar there that you're for a three quarter inch meter, which is a fairly typical meter size and usage level of 5.5 cu hundred cubic feet, um, you're currently at $31.60 and that would go up a little over a dollar um, in 20, 18, so pretty small increase there. The median bill is 9% higher than Moorhead of these 10 utilities. So you're still underneath the median and still I think very competitive with many of the other utilities here in this region. Um, some of these utilities in yellow have wells, uh, well water, and so that cost of providing that uh, water is much less than the surface water treatment that you have and which Fargo has as well. And so that is another factor that comes in play with these comparisons. But again, I think the bottom line is that the residential customers are still paying a very competitive rate when looking at others. Quick question on that. Do we know what Fargo is? I mean, with all the utilities, that's fine, but the one we really are, need to be compare ourselves most to, sorry about the bad English, is Fargo. So uh, do we know where they're gonna go this year? Are they going to be flat? Do we have any idea? I'm not sure if I've. Say again. I believe they have a rate increase plan. They have a rate increase plan. Okay. Typically, they seem to have uh, similar rate increases to us. Um, they are actually, you know, use tax dollars. You know, they actually have a sales tax that brings their rates down. They use that for a lot of their uh, water main replacement projects and that type of thing. So y their number is you know, it's almost not, not apples to apples. They do like Tim was talking about where they basically take other tax dollars to, where to help out. Yep. Yep. Thanks. Yep. So shop in Moorhead. <laughs> just <laughs> Good uh, the next chart is just a commercial customer, small business um, type of usage. And um, in this case, you're a little bit above the median and this would go up again a few dollars in 2018 for this level of customer. And I really want to emphasize again, it's going to vary by customer in terms of what they're going to see. This particular customer is going to see about a 4% increase. Some might see five or six, but again, uh, in dollar terms, it's, it's just a few dollars for this customer. And finally for industrial, so this is just one example of your industrial class. And you can see the red bar there, you're the fourth lowest currently on this chart and you would go up slightly about four and a half percent. You're uh, neck and neck with Fargo, which again, I think is very important to see that you're very competitive with them. And the median currently is about 11% higher. And so um, if there's one trend we're seeing with water rates, I think in general is that a lot of utilities are doing some very regular increases. Um, and so I think it's very common to see the kind of increases that you're doing. Uh, we've been involved with other studies like that. If anything, I think what, what we're seeing with some other utilities is having to do much larger increases because they have a, a sudden big capital need that hits them. And so we've been involved with unfortunately having to do some 10 or 20 or 30% increases. I think what we're really trying to do here and what Moorhead staff has really worked hard on is to try to have a plan in place to step these up over time. So even though in percentage terms it seems like a lot, really we're, they're trying to do that in small pieces over time so that to reduce the impacts on customers, which is unlike what we've seen, you know, unfortunately in some other cities where they have had some, some bigger impacts when they had needs that, that came up. So. So really to wrap up, and I'll answer any questions you have, but I think the uh, water utility is very strong financially and this would help to protect the integrity of that f the finances. I think you've got some good goals in place in terms of the coverage and the uh, days cash in, in on hand and so on. So a good plan in place to, to meet your needs and also try to keep rates competitive as well. Um, we're always available to help with changes if necessary over this four year plan. So. If, things change and you need to tweak these rates, we can certainly do that. And as I have just mentioned, I think we're seeing a general trend, especially in the water utilities of, of higher rates, so. Any Folks, any questions for, for Tim based on this presentation? You've you had an opportunity to work with. 
No, I mean, it's, uh, I'm glad we didn't have to go 6.5% as we had planned. I mean, 5% is still 5%, but, uh, and, and as you said, I mean, we've been talking to other utilities who haven't even thought about starting their water main replacements. They're sitting, sitting still on the cast iron, and they're going to fall apart. So, yeah. you know, we have another 10 years to go, but it's, it's not 20 or 30. Um, and I think we talked about it at some point, I mean, we have two, 200 miles of pipe in the ground, you know, that's going to take a lot of money to replace, but luckily we only have about 10 more years to go, I guess, right? Uh, and then we'll be in good shape. Yeah. But the interesting thing was, too, as uh, yeah, in your first slides where you show that our overall water usage goes down, even with the growth we've had in mm -hmm. town, and that goes hand in hand with the average household going down in, on the usage side of things. Yeah. Uh, and that's an interesting <coughs> thing to see. Uh, I mean, good for the environment, but not good for the utility, obviously, but yeah, yeah we'll have to deal with that. Tim, would you share what the unit growth that you uh, spoke of earlier about the apartments and the housing? Yeah, How much I was just was? thinking of that. I should mention that. Um, so when you look back to 2006, you can see on the, the blue bars there, again, I apologize, mm. it's small, but the usage was 1,050,000 uh, CCF in that year. You returned to that level in 12 because it was a dry year, so you had more lawn aggression. But then in 2016, again, you're finally back to that level you were in 2006. However, there's about 2,000 additional homes that have been added and about 50 apartment buildings <coughs> in that time. Mm -hmm. So you're getting that the same level of usage but that many more units. And so that is pretty astounding to think of. That's how much you know conservation and efficiency has gone on over that period alone. So yeah, <laughs> thanks for bringing that up, yeah. Um, just, just as an additional comment, uh, toward our earlier conversation. John, uh, I'm glad you're here from Packet. Um, uh, I, I think there's an ongoing conversation that we're, we're going to need to have here. Um, because truly, um, with conservation measures, uh, but, but with our ongoing need uh, for, you know, the infrastructure costs and such, um, <coughs> we, we're, we're going to have to tussle through this uh, so, that, so that what we do is we serve our our residential and our residential, you know, our, our base well, uh, as far as the folks that live here and are earning their, their, their livings, but, uh, but we're depending on our, our commercial and industrial folks to provide uh, that economy. So uh, it's not an easy conversation. Um, the costs are there. Uh, we need the revenues in order to maintain and provide the system. Um, and somebody's got to pay for it. So uh, that's the conundrum, I guess. Is, of, uh, of moving forward. So I, I'm glad you're here tonight to join us for this, and we'll uh, look forward to that continuing conversation with folks like you. I've got just a couple of questions. Go give, for it. Go give Tim a couple of hard ones. Yeah. Uh, one, just explain a little bit more about the seasonal rates. Uh, we're mandated by the state yeah. of Minnesota to either do conservation efforts, you know, and or a seasonal rate. We do a seasonal rate. Uh, just, I think you had a slide that actually talked about it just a little bit. And it's like 50% more in the uh, yeah. So in the summertime. In the residential, yeah, the, the rate that was established is kind of a neat uh, deal because it basically allows an allowance of 150% of your winter usage in the summer. So you can use up to that amount. You are paying the seasonal rate, which is a little bit higher than the winter rate, but you're still paying a lower rate. But then if you get over that level, then you're going to pay uh, an even different rate. And again, that's used in some other utilities too. I know in Sioux Falls, where I live, they have a, a rate like that. But it's really targeting that irrigation usage. And it is kind of a catch-22 because the state is, is requiring that you have these kind of signals in place to reflect that with your customers. And in ca it can, in some cases, drive the system needs. If you had some very extreme irrigation use, it could require more capacity in wells and so on if that were occurring. And so it really is a cost-based rate as well as being uh, kind of required by the state. But that's really what's, uh, what residents are paying for their water usage in the summer months. And again, it's a small sliver of the population that would be probably affected by this. But I got one other question, and this is the tougher one. Uh, you heard me try to explain demand and energy uh, rates. And, and really, from a water standpoint, you know, you just have per gallon rates. So number one, do you want to take a stab at demand and energy rates? And then talk about how you deal with demand with water. Yeah, well, and there is a demand component in here, and I don't have a slide on that. Um, yeah, I do. In the cost 
customer charge breakdown. This is something we re reviewed earlier with the budget committee, but um, that debt service portion of the rate is really kind of getting at the demand a little bit, the parallel with the electric rates and looking at how much flow can go through different size meter and so what can be pulled um, by, you know, obviously a, six, a customer with a six inch meter can pull a lot more water in a lot shorter time than someone with a five eighths inch meter. And so really that is looking at the system costs and allocating that so the larger meters do get a, a bigger share of that to kind of reflect a little bit of that demand component even though it's not quite the same as with electric where you're looking at more of a, a measurement of demand if you will each month. Um, but it is kind of a proxy for that to kind of parallel that. So I think it's an important concept because again, with both utilities, there is so much fixed costs and going back to some of the questions earlier, um, generation in electric, treatment plant and water, so many things that are going on, whether you use, you know, 1,000 gallons or 10,000 or nothing, you know, if you go south for the winter. And so those facilities are there to serve you when you need them, but we need to get the fixed charges where they need to be to collect that, so. Hopefully that answers the question a little bit, so. Yep. Anything else before you move to approve? Thank you, Tim and, yep. and Mark Mr. and Nancy. Hey, Tim, um, when we were discussing uh, uh, earlier here, I think you had made a point as far as the, it's, it's in the, the best interest to look at regular smaller rate increases yeah. than in some communities where they haven't had the infrastructure, they have a major plant malfunction right. where they're going to look and I think you said some cases 20 to 25 percent increase in rates over one year yeah. and it's it's a challenge all the time to look at increases but uh, one of the processes that I asked staff to look at is a zero across the board increase and what would that impact be and I think one of your slides exactly yeah. showed what the impact would be we, we it can't it can't be done and continue right. functioning as a <coughs> as a viable entity here for it so we uh, we understand the concerns here but the I, I don't think anybody would want to see a 20 25 percent uh, charge if the water tower went down or the water plant had an issue here for the so the, the stable plan I think is is mm -hmm. a good plan and your recommendations are yeah. appreciated yeah I agree yep. thank you Okay, winding down this, this portion of our conversation before the hearing, uh, I would entertain a motion to approve the 2017 water rate study if you're ready to go that way. I'll make that motion. I have a motion, do I have a second? Second. Any discussion on the motion? All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. 2017 water rate study is approved. It is just about time for us to move into hearing. Um, Bill or staff, anything as filler for a couple of minutes before we move into that? I can start reading rules of conduct and things like that. If, uh, no, I wouldn't do that until you start. But, okay. you know, if you could have Chris could talk for two minutes uh, okay. and just start number 13, and you can think about that during the rate hearing. Okay, Chris, <laughs> come on up. You got, you got two minutes. Here's your elevator speech. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Bill. Yeah. Um, before I get started on this item, just want to disclose that I do have a conflict of interest in that um, one of the things we're looking at in this item is uh, basically professional services in the amount of $1,500, $500 of that uh, is proposed to be towards my, my wife, Sue Leggett. Uh, discuss the matter with John and Bill. Um, they're comfortable with proceeding as long as the disclosure is uh, is made to you. So just wanted to make that disclosure before I went ahead and presented. Um, cutting into my two minutes, but... Uh, I hope she buys you something real nice. <laughs> yeah. Um, just a little background. Uh, we have new commissioners. Um, just want to talk briefly about what we've done on the Oport project uh, in respect to um, what we're proposing to do uh, on the Woodlawn project. So. Uh, last year, we actually did a, a really unique project with coordination of the city uh, in terms of designing a logo or artwork, if you will, uh, for the Oakport Water Tower. Um, we were able to receive $10,000 in grant funding from the uh, state of Minnesota to do the artwork. Um, so actually, the artwork that you see if you've gone and uh, looked at the Oakport Water Tower um, was actually paid for by the uh, state of Minnesota through uh, grant funding. Um, as part of that process, we actually did a, a very significant 
public input process um, whereby two artists were uh, selected to design the um, artwork and they designed a, a theme that I would say is, is um, reflective of the Oakport neighborhood. They included some elements uh, of design that um, are in North Moorhead and in the Oakport area. What we're proposing to do, um, we've talked a little bit about the need to uh, recondition both I-94 and Woodlawn. Um, Woodlawn is actually proposed to be in 2018. So we're looking for um, some input into uh, what we do with the Woodlawn water tower uh, recoding design. And what we're proposing to do is actually hire those two artists and sue the, the project coordinator for the Oakport project to design artwork that would be um, similar to what was done in Oakport, um, but maybe incorporate some elements of the uh, Woodlawn neighborhood. So instead of having, um, for example, if you're looking at the design of the Oakport tank, there's a, um, a heron, there's a wind tower, there's the Yemcombs. Uh, maybe we change those design elements to something reflective of the Woodlawn neighborhood. So we wanted to kind of get this in front of you to start the conversation. Um, if we decided to do something different that would require a, a great deal of public input, it'll likely take several months to, to do that process. So we kind of wanted to start the conversation early and get some input. And with that, I'll, I'll probably wait and we can pick it up. Okay. The, Any question? One, one, one quick comment I would like to make. Uh, you, you mentioned artwork and logo. And uh, the logo thing, well, that was a discussion we had in the last one, yeah. right? The logo is, if, if there's a city logo, it's the cities and the city decides, right? right? So we need to make, be conscious of that. So if it's artwork, you know, it's probably a different discussion as if it were a logo. Just want to make that point so we don't run Understood. sideways. Any other questions, concerns? We're on 13, right? We'll come back. Yes, we'll we come back. Come this back. is, you know, John asked for this, so yeah. you know, better give yeah. him some time. Well, we'll come back to it um, in a moment. I mean, I think you should do your rate hearing now and then. Shall we get it done? Yep. Okay. All right, we'll come back to it. Thank you, Chris. <clears throat> All right, at this time, we will be opening um, our, rate in here, our rate hearing on uh, water rates. Again, um, we're having one hearing this evening. Since there is no proposed or recommended uh, increase in electric rates. We're not going uh, down that road tonight. So, um, as stated in Section 7, uh, rules governing the conduct of hearing, the Moorhead Public Service Commission bylaws ad are uh, adopted as of December 14, 2010. No rate change shall be adopted by the Commission unless the Commission first holds a public hearing, affording all affected parties a chance to participate. A notice of said hearing shall be published in the official newspaper of the city at least 14 days prior to the date set for the hearing. The notice shall indicate the purpose for, the time, date, and place of the hearing. The hearing shall be conducted by the president or member selected by the commission. At the hearing, the commission and its staff shall, pre shall present the facts establishing the need for and the reasonableness of the proposed rate change. Sufficient time shall be allowed to enable all interested parties to be heard, but the Commission shall determine when all relevant testimony has been presented or when testimony has become repetitious. Testimony will be considered only after a speaker has been recognized and he or she has identified himself or herself. For the 30 days, for the 30 days subsequent to the closing of the hearing and prior to the adoption of a rate change, Written testimony shall be received and considered by the Commission. The Commission may grant extensions prior to the adoption of the rate change if it finds that additional testimony is necessary or productive. After all relevant testimony has been submitted, the Commission shall adopt rates which it determines to be necessary and reasonable, uh, including the effective date and cause the same to be published in the official newspaper of the city. For those of you attending the rate hearing, please provide your name and address on the sign-in sheets that are located near the elevators and on the tables in front of the commission. Uh, at this point, if we're ready to go, may I have a motion to open the water rate hearing? So moved. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. All right. At this point, uh, presentation from Yep. Staff, in order to staff. get started. So I'll I'll, uh, I'll start, and if there's yeah, I'll start, and if there's questions, okay. uh, Chris Knutson, Water Division Manager, or Nancy Lund, our Admin and Finance Manager, can uh, assist. Okay. Uh, this is similar to probably presentations we do every year. 
Um, it was good to see uh, Tim Miller do his presentation ahead of time uh, because some of the information uh, was a little more detailed with his uh, water cost of service study. And in our first uh, slide here, I mean, we basically talk about how we set rates. We do uh, a, water a water cost of service every, at least every seven years. And uh, we have just, we're in the process or have completed, it was just accepted by the commission tonight, uh, Tim Miller of Missouri River Energy Services did the cost uh, of service study and uh, you got a chance to see that. Um, also, we, uh, we also do our long range planning where we talk about our capital expenditures, what our operating expenses are going to be looking light, looking light over that uh, period and then our reserves, and we do have a, a detailed reserve policy, and um, we, we uh, work on following that. Um, our budget process is a, a three-month process, and we go into all kinds of detail on that. Um, there's a budget committee that, that reviews all of that information, and then we basically have a, a, a proposal. Um, as far as timeline goes, we have the public hearing this evening, and then uh, the commission will re uh, review it once again in November, and then have final approval in uh, December. So the, uh, what is the increases funding? Um, and I'll try not to be too repetitive, because Tim Miller did talk a little bit about this, but we do have a number of capital improvement uh, projects in the water division that will be funded over the next five years. Uh, about $23 million worth of improvements. Um, water main replacement projects are a big part of that. And then we do have a south side water tower and uh, the transmission line that connects that. And then we've got other uh, plant improvements, including a new sludge uh, treatment facility or sludge uh, press. And then we've got some of the maintenance that needs to be done to our uh, extensive capital system. So uh, 23 million over the next five years is a big part of why uh, we need to have a series of rate increases. Next slide. Uh, basically, uh, we're looking at a 5.3% overall increase and the uh, water rates include a customer charge and a volume charge. We've got a, uh, the customer charge uh, here and that's based on different sizes of uh, meters. And um, for instance, a three quarter inch meter, or a three quarter inch, yeah, uh, line and meter is going up about 4.11%, um, 10.95 up to 11.40. Um, I'll go to the next slide. Uh, where, the, where the money goes, the expenses uh, for MPS as far as water, um, we basically take a $34.65 average residential monthly bill and break it down into its different components. Um, the green on the, on the slide is capital items that are not financed and that's about uh, $14 per month goes into the capital expenditures that uh, are not financed. Um, we have other uh, items, the purple uh, area is uh, salary wages and benefits. The uh, the, one of the blue ones is the other operating expenses. And then we've got principal and, and uh, interest payments that is about 10%. So I mean, that's a fairly well distributed uh, pie chart. Capital expenditures is, uh, is the largest one. Next slide is the, uh, I talked to earlier about the, uh, the fixed charge that is on the meter charge, uh, the other component to our water rates is a volume charge. And the volume charge is, varies based on the type of, re of customer. So we have uh, residential, apartment, commercial, and industrial customers. And like we said, the overall increase is a 5.3% increase. The uh, residential increase is 5.2% overall. Um, it varies a bit with the uh, um, seasonal water rates, they, uh, they go up a, just a, dip, a bit differently. Um, apartments will see an overall increase of 4.7, so a little bit less than the uh, 5.3 overall. Uh, commercial customers will see just a bit more than that 
average uh, increase. So theirs is 5.4%. And then the industrial class, and as Tim Miller mentioned, I mean, they're a, a steadier user. Um, their overall increase would be 4.4% for next year. Next slide. The, um, we kind of focus on uh, residential uh, customers in our presentation here. We do have information in the back for industrial customers, which I know we have a couple in the audience, so uh, there's some fact sheets. They can kind of look through those and ask questions if they would like. But here we're just looking at uh, what the average residential customer will see as far as an increase. And the increase would be $1.17 uh, per month. And we basically break it down into the customer charge and the commodity charge. Um, the commodity charge would go up 72 cents per month. The customer charge 45 cents per month. And that's based on 600 cubic feet per month, which is our average user. That's 4,500 gallons per month. Next slide is Bill, fire. Oh, go ahead. If I might just yep. step out of line here a, a little bit. You know, I, I, I don't want to minimize this at all. Um, but, but we tend to say, well, golly, you know, the residential impact is going to be a buck 17. Um, but since we do have commercial and industrial uh, customers and, and even some present, I, I just want to throw the question out. What, what's the impact there? You know, a buck seventeen to a household is one thing, but but what what does the proposal as we shift out of the residential? I just I want to get a better handle as a member of your board on what on, on what a five percent increase means, you know, to those folks. I don't have that readily available. I'm not sure if uh, one of our uh, and customers and, and, might and John, have that. You don't have to step up tonight, but but going forward. Uh, you know, again, we've tended to minimize, well, it's only $1.17. Um, but it does impact uh, our conversations with people like this when we talk about employment, when we talk about, you know, uh, keeping jobs, growing plants, you know. And so uh, going forward, I'd, I, I would just like to have a little better understanding of that. Yeah, it, it, for our largest customers, it's tens of thousands of dollars. Yeah. Sure. So it's a large number. So all we we watch those costs closely because, as you notice tonight, I mean they're in the audience. They are very concerned about our water and electric rates, and uh, you know we try and keep them up to speed on why we need those increases. We meet with them, try and meet with them regularly. Um, well, and as members of this board, we have to understand. You know the whole scene, and and we're delivering a product and a service to a lot of people at a lot of different levels, and we have to be good stewards of our of our resources and our and our facilities. Uh, at the same time, then I, I I think I think it's good to lend an ear to the other side to say this is this is how it's impacting us and it's affecting our decision making. So uh, just to get everything kind of out there so that we really do have the the broad understanding of what. A dollar seventeen is versus tens of thousands or whatever whatever the number is. Yeah, and we've we've looked at it very closely, and uh, in this water rate study for the industrial class, we're actually not increasing their rates as much as the cost of service study says we should. And uh, like Tim Miller mentioned, we'll we'll take a look at that you know every year, um, but we do recognize that there is an you know, there's there's some art in uh, uh, setting rates and some science, mm -hmm. and so we do take a look at that and we try and listen to our customers. We're we're within a bandwidth, but we're we're trying to be on the light side on the industrials just to recognize that they've got to compete. They've got <coughs> we want them in town, and uh, but at the same time we've got to we've got to be integral about how we set rates. So uh, we've pushed. Tim and our staff hard on, on those issues. Yep. Good question. Okay. Well, I've got him interrupted. Anybody else? <laughs> okay. Go ahead. Bill. Yeah, there's there's just a couple of slides left. So, I mean, it's not uh, hard to, uh, I mean, you can interrupt me. Um, <coughs> talk just for a moment about fire protection. This is actually, uh, I would call it a collaborative effort between us and the city on uh, 
uh, paying for fire protection. Um, we actually bill for this service and do the rate study and we're phasing in um, fire protection actually to take it out of the normal volume rates, which does help, again, the, uh, uh, it probably helps all the classes, but it probably helps the industrial class the most to get fire protection spread out over um, the other classes more. And so this has been uh, pulled out and we're in a, the sixth year of an eight year phase in <coughs> of uh, basically doing fire protection on like all the residential bills, all the commercial bills, they all get those uh, charges. So, and they're just going up in those different levels. Next slide. Uh, this one, basically we're not having an electric rate uh, hearing, but typically we have this slide where we show what an average customer's bill would go up, and it's still gonna be $1.17, which doesn't sound like a lot, and then the percentage is less than 1% of the MPS portion of an average residential bill. I don't know if it's real applicable for this year, but we've kinda always done it that way, so we did it uh, today as well, so. Next slide is uh, probably more interesting. It, it, it shows what our rate increases have been um, over the past uh, decade or so. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, you can see the series of three, six and a half percent increases. We actually thought we were gonna have to maintain uh, six and a half percent increases, but what we're doing is attempting to lower those, um, but we're probably doing it for a year additionally on the back end, but we'll review those from, you know, on, on an annual basis. Uh, so what we're talking about right now is the 2018 year, and that's a 5.3% uh, increase. But that is really your long range uh, rate plan for MPS. And Bill, the reason we went from uh, 2014 to 15 and made that big increase, that was to increase, to increase the number of pipe Right. That we were replacing, right? That was exactly. the beginning of that. Yep. Yeah. And, and as you mentioned, it doesn't hurt to mention it again. We've got 200 miles of pipe, and, and it's deteriorating at a, at a rapid rate. And, uh, I mean, we do a water asset management plan. Uh, Chris, our water division manager, presents that on a, at least an annual basis. And uh, one of the more interesting things, and I haven't even talked to Chris about this, uh, uh, talking to one of uh, Chris's employees, it almost appears that as we're replacing, you'll like this, Ralph, as we're replacing those uh, water mains out there, it's uh, affecting the, uh, it appears to be affecting the remaining pipe that's in the ground. It's like, you know, because corrosion happens and it, it, it adheres to those old cast iron pipes, that there's less cast iron in the ground, so they're, they're uh, deteriorating at a faster rate, you know. Uh, but I don't know if we'll have any scientific study on that one. I'll have to talk to Chris about that. But it might mean that you know we've got to keep up. I mean, it might exponentially increase as we get less and less of that yeah. old pipe in the ground in the that still remains in the ground. So have we seen a change in the water main breaks? I know it's a, it, that's an inexact number, but have you seen a change up or down or sideways on the water main breaks in general? Jump up there, Chris. I believe in uh, 13 we hit a peak of about 95 and we've subsequently come down from 13 to the, um, 95 to like 75 to 60. Now we're, I think we're on track. 2016 was like 40, 2017 looking like 40. So some of the immediate impact of the water main asset management plan has been to get at some of the stuff that's really causing problems and we've, we've eliminated some of that stuff from our distribution system. So we're our annual long-term average is about 40 main breaks. I think just with the immediate impact, we've been able to reduce our average to at least the average. Yeah. <laughs> the average. Yeah. Well, and the thing is too, I mean, each main uh, main break costs us X, X amount of dollars, which right. of course we don't have to spend if we have replaced a piece of main. That's, that's exactly. the idea, right? How long, what's the life expectancy of the stuff we're putting in the ground right now? About 100 years. About 100 what years? Hoping, what we're hoping for. Yeah. So none of us should be here anymore. <laughs> well, Ken will still be around, right? 
<laughs> he may be. Yeah. He may be. Okay. Chris, are, are, should we be satisfied with the rate of replacement now that we've established over the last few years, or is it aggressive enough? Is it too aggressive? Yeah, yeah, I, don't. I think it's been a good, a really positive step to get where we're at today, and yeah. we're, you know, one of the big things that drives it is actually the city's plan for street rehabilitation. So um, one of the things that is yet undetermined in 2020, 2021 is the level of, of street rehab the city is going to be doing. Um, so this last year was one of the first coordination years we've had. Worked out really well, saved MPS a lot of money to do the coordination piece. Um, you know, I guess from a year to year basis, It'll depend a lot on what the city does long term on on street rehabilitation. That'll be a big driving factor. But from a purely asset management standpoint, um, as long as we're getting into that um, one or one percent replacement of our system per year, that's that's really where we want to be at. And we're, if you take the average of the last four years, we're right around that um, that one percent per year replacement of our system. That's where we need to be. Here's about, but about 50% is the co of the cost is putting the pipe in the ground <laughs> and filling it back up, and the other 50% goes on the street right. closure, right? Yeah. So if, if the city's in the street already anyway, we don't pay for that extra? Uh, we pay for some of it. We don't it? pay for the top two inches of okay. asphalt. So um, even that top two inches represents $50,000 in, in a project, or even more than that. It's, it's, it ends up being a lot of money. So, so. rebuilding a street is uh, as expensive as Digging the digging the hole and putting the pipe in. Right. Well, interesting. Yeah. So that's a good collaboration that we do with the city. Mm -hmm. The uh, next slide and last slide is is a comparison of our uh, residential water rates throughout the region. This is my shop in Moorhead slide uh, because if you look at the blue uh, bar, that's uh, MPS in 2017 and in 2018 it's uh, it's the yellow or the orange bar and it's thirty four dollars and sixty five cents compared to Fargo's current rate is twenty seven uh, sixty four but again if you shop in Fargo you're helping pay for their water main replacement because they direct some of their sales tax toward uh, water mains so shop in Moorhead. <laughs> and with that, uh, I'm done. One one okay. question on that one, if I may. Uh, Mrs. Rubio, you bet. We saw we saw the, uh, the previous slide on the industrial rates. On the industrial rates, we are more competitive. Is that correct? Than uh, Tim might have had those slides, with, and we were more competitive on than Fargo with those rates. Right on. Right on. Yeah, right. It was pretty much right on. Right on. Okay. Good point. Any other Thank questions you. for Bill from members? Okay. Well, let's move into commentary then. Uh, I think there are probably at least a couple of folks here that would like to talk to us about this. So are there any customers who wish to, to comment this evening? I'll call two or three times, make sure that, you know, I see a couple of, of generally outspoken members of my community that, uh, that are sitting back there, but. Uh, Again, any, uh, any customers that wish to be heard about our water rates this evening? One more time. Anyone care to be heard about Morehead Public Service water rates for the coming year? All right, with that, I guess uh, nothing left to do but close the hearing at, at this point then, okay? Can I have a motion to close the water rate hearing? I'll make the motion to close the hearing. I have a motion. A second? Second. Cheryl, second. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Well, that was quick. Any comments, folks, based on what we heard? Oh, just uh, want to thank the <coughs> community uh, representation that we had tonight. Absolutely. Um, and I would encourage anybody who has concerns or issues to submit it in writing or be sure you contact your commissioner to express your concerns. A absolutely. How, how long are we open for commentary? Is there a page about that? Yeah, the back side. The back side of the page, okay. Then I'll go to that side of the page. <laughs> Before you all leave, though, I would like to, to make a, uh, just a public comment about our staff. 
Um, we got a couple of compliments, uh, actually, uh, concerning our water staff. We heard one orally tonight, but, but also in writing. Uh, about how, how responsive uh, our team has been in a couple of situations recently, electric and water. And uh, I just kind of wanted to, to, to call that to attention because it's, it's always good to hear that our people are doing good things in the community. And uh, it isn't always just about uh, the dollars and cents. Sometimes it's about uh, the warm fuzzies, you know, the, uh, the way we respond and, and, uh, and what it is we do to help our, our businesses and our residents uh, to take care of business when, when unforeseen things happen. So, uh, so to the team, thank you very much. Without singling out anybody to the team, thank you very much for what you do. So, all right, uh, to conclude this portion, written comments are going to be received for 30 days from the date of this hearing, and no action will be taken on rates until those 30 days uh, have, uh, have transpired. For comments to be considered by the commission, written comments should be postmarked no later than Friday, November 24th, 2017, and mailed to Moorhead Public Service Commission, P.O. Box 779, Moorhead, Minnesota, 56561-0779. Formal decision regarding Moorhead Public Service 2018 rate structure will be determined at the Commission's meeting on or about the 5th of December. Uh, additional information on our proposed budget and rates is available at www.mpsutility.com. Anything else? Casey, get it all? I read every word, even added a couple. <laughs> even added a couple. So, all right. With that, getting back to the regular agenda. We have, uh, I think, moved on to item number 15. No, nope, 13. 13. 13. 13. You oh, want to continue that's right. On. We got to get back to 13 because John asked for that. So we're going to finish 13. Chris, you're up. Um, actually, I believe I pre completed my presentation. If you guys have any questions regarding the item, uh, certainly be happy to, to answer them. Yep. Uh, the reason why I'm honored to take it off the consent agenda is um, I think in the past, where when we were going through the Orc Port, um, process there was commentary and even if some letters to the editor and that sort of thing about additional cost that it was going to and what impact would that have on the users and I just wanted to make that clarification here and then Chris maybe you can expand that at this point from your observation if we follow what we did last time there should not be any additional cost to the users for this project if the artwork is done, that would basically replace the painting of the word Moorhead on the water tower. So just for clarification, that this is a negative, it is a not a financial impact project to the users. And just clarify and expand on that. Right. Um, so in terms of the financial component of the project, uh, we received the $10,000 funding from the state to pay for Oakport. So that actually paid for the paint on the tower, it paid the artists, it paid for a public event associated with the project, paid for a sign to, to, to designate the project. Um, that funding is actually only available once every couple years and I'm not sure the availability of it going into the future for us. Um, so in this case, for this proposed project, we would actually be, you know, the $1,500 associated with the design is not going to be compensated um, by grant funding. So um, there will be, so that will have to be a part of the project cost. Now, as a whole, um, I believe when the, the tower was done originally, just to do the Moorhead part on Woodlawn, I believe it cost $15,000 back in 1994 or five when they did it. Um, what we're looking at for total cost on just the logo uh, or artwork um, is uh, $10,480. We actually got the, the cost of the artwork on both sides of Woodlawn. It'll be $10,480 plus the $1,500 of design fees that we're proposing uh, for that particular project. So it is a, a little different than Oakport in that basically all of the artwork component of Oakport was compensated by the state through a grant here um, we have, we'll have some professional services associated with design that will not be compensated by the state, but on a whole, still, I would say very competitive with what we would pay for just to put, um, 
for example, the City of Moorhead logo up back on the tower, it would be in that $15,000 range. Thanks. It's a long explanation. But. Yep. And then also, uh, uh, um, I don't know if anybody was aware of it, but during the presentation, uh, Moorhead was recognized with a special recognition from the state or the arts. Could you help me with that? Yeah. Um, the, the funding is from the Lake Regions Art Council, and I believe they added a sign to th the Moorhead sign when you enter the city has a population and then they added all um, like a, a art city designation art arts legacy thank you Casey arts legacy city designation was actually added as a result of that project so um, Moorhead is now an, an arts legacy city as a result of it really unique collaboration again with the city in terms of the city did a lot of the grant application light work um, we just kind of provided the canvas in, in a sense thank you Anything else, John? No, it's plenty. Members of the commission, anything for Chris on this? Okay. Already. Do we, yes, yeah, so we need to approve then this, right? I'd entertain a motion to approve the professional design services for Woodlawn Water Tower recoding design. So moved. moved. Got a motion? Second? Second. A second. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Takes care of item number 13. Let's move on to item number 15 to approve amended bylaws of the Moorhead Public Service Commission. Have you all had an opportunity to look over what had been proposed? I think there was, was there some discussion last? Uh, absent? Yeah, we. Yeah, there probably was some discussion. If you want me to, I can just do a so brief summary? intro and then. Uh, we discussed section nine, right? Wasn't that discussion about the Labor Commission? The uh, s Article 9 or Section, which article are you? I'm sorry, Article 3, Section 9. Uh, you, why don't you go ahead? Yeah. Yeah, that's probably the main, the main issue here. I mean, uh, you know, the bylaws are, a, you know, like a higher level policy document of the commission. Um, it takes a little bit more of your votes to approve bylaws than approving policies. It takes a majority of the full commission. Policies, for instance, would just take, if there was only three of you here, two of the three would pass it. On the bylaws, it's a little bit higher level, but it still is really a policy document of the, of the uh, commission. So it basically outlines what your practices are going to be regarding certain um, you know, details and items of how you run your business. Um, John can get into a little bit more of the detail on that if you have some questions, because he deals with bylaws all the time. The uh, section nine under article three is, deals with uh, the negotiating committee of the commission. And what came to light recently uh, to us, because uh, the city established a, bud a budget committee as a standing committee of their uh, council, and they are required to have open meetings for that. And so we looked at the, when we were looking at the bylaws and, and we had John opine on this, we basically looked at the negotiating committee that's in this, that's in the bylaws um, as a standing committee, because it says you shall have a committee and it's called the negotiating committee and they shall do these certain things. Um, that's pretty much a standing committee by anybody's definition. Um, what we're proposing is that you strike that from the bylaws and then if you want to, you know, outside of the bylaws, you can take action and appoint a committee. You could actually do this, this very similar committee here and say, um, we'll appoint a negotiating committee and have them do the same thing, um, but it wouldn't be a standing committee, it would be one that you would, like for instance, if you're gonna use it for labor negotiations, you would do that typically once a year or maybe once every three years, and so you'd form the committee for a short period of time and then the committee would be basically gone. That then isn't a standing committee and you wouldn't have to have, you wouldn't be subject to the open meeting law of the state of Minnesota, which you definitely don't wanna I mean, I wouldn't think that you'd want to negotiate with our um, collective bargaining groups in an open meeting. So really, I think it's uh, 
something that you're going to have to do, uh, eliminate the negotiating committee from the bylaws, and then you can decide after a closed meeting whether you want to negotiate with the negotiating committee and then have the president appoint a committee, which wouldn't be a standing committee. It would be a, you know, just an ad hoc committee to do a certain task. So I think the main concern that uh, you probably would have as a board would be, hey, we're changing the bylaws here and we're changing the way we're doing things. Well, I think you can, you know, you can still do things the way you've always done them. You would just do it outside the bylaws. You would form a committee, just like you form the budget committee annually. So I, uh, I'm recommending that you approve the bylaws and uh, the other changes are, you know, the changing the president to a chairperson and those types of things. And then just some cleanup type things that if you've got questions on, John or I can answer those. Anyway, that's a, a long explanation. I don't know, if John, if you had anything you wanted to add. Uh, I would like to add a, a couple things. Sure the, on. it's on. Okay. So, uh, as far as discussion of labor negotiation strategy, you can still do that in a closed session, even if you left the bylaws yeah. unchanged. It's just the negotiations themselves would need to be held in public, but you don't lose the ability to have a strategy session as a closed session. Um, the, the, there are some other policy matters that are being somewhat changed uh, by these bylaws, so I think it's important that you look at these bylaws very uh, thoroughly on what you want to do with them. Um, I was a asked to look at these and make certain changes, which I did. Um, I also found some things that were minor that I thought, well, as long as we're changing them, uh, I'll change those also. Uh, and just in the last um, uh, <coughs> 10 days, I've also determined that if there was going to be an amendment to the bylaws, there would be a a couple other small matters that I'd recommend. One of them is um, relating to referring to a uh, district heating utility uh, if you decide to do that because we now have that on the table as one of the things we're considering. Mm -hmm. And then there was, um, uh, there's a reference in here to uh, the word him when it should be a reference to the word him and the word her at the same time. But it, these are policy decisions you're making on yeah. these bylaws, so it's important you. that you consider yeah. them. Members, um, uh, I, I don't believe there's any rush. Um, are, are you feeling like you're ready to, to, to take action on this, or do we need a little bit of time to, to have, have some conversation and, and uh, you know, be a little bit more deliberate? Okay. I, I know I need a little more time to review it. Mm -hmm. Or I can make any kind of uh, informed yeah. vote. Anyone else? Go ahead, Ralph. Ralph, yeah. I, I'm the same way. I think we should look at these. Yeah. I mean, I, I get why we're making those changes. Yep. Uh, but I think we should look at the impact of them. And uh, yeah, I think we need, we need a little bit more time. I mean, I would propose we table it. If there's a discussion today, so that's fine. But I think we should d table the dis decision about the changes. I'd like it to be a conversation among all five of us as well. You yep. know, Chris yep. being absent yep. is, I think, significant. Um, um, John? Yeah, I have a concern of changing the bylaws with not having something in place of what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. um, I think last meeting we had talked about hiring an attorney, representing, mm -hmm. uh, and somebody else as far as based on some of the uh, recommendations that other parties have used to to settle this but without having a clear understanding of how we're going to do this in the future I would say we wouldn't change until we know exactly what we're going to do in the future yeah and I think oh, we have some table. conversations so, so a table would probably be appropriate at this time yeah. well it seems there's a consensus of opinion on that um, if uh, if we Go ahead and table this for this evening. Um, uh, set it at a later date. Uh, take care of some closed business uh, yet tonight, and then um, we'd be ready to roll on. Yep. So I'm, I'm making a motion uh, if you're interested yeah. to table item uh, 15. 
Motion table doesn't require a second, does it? I'll second that. Oh, okay, it does. Okay, then we'll do it. I have a motion and a second to table. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion is table, or um, uh, pro proposed bylaws are tabled. Now, uh, I believe we are moving into a closed uh, conversation for a while, so this meeting will now close for executive session. As permitted by Minnesota Statute Section 13D.05, Subdivision 3, Subpoint B, to discuss possible litigation that classifies as attorney-client privilege in communication, as well as permitted by Minnesota Statute Section 13D.03 to discuss labor negotiation strategies related to negotiations with IBEW Local 1426 and AFC, AFSCME Local 1450. Um, motion to, to go to close? Motion to go to close the session. Second? Second. After. Uh, can we expect action? Real estate. Is there a third? Is there a third potential for closed? I only have two listed here. Just two. Well, previous uh, information that I received, there was a possible discussion regarding a real estate parcel. That's off. That's off. That's All right. off tonight. Okay. All righty. So I have a motion and a second to go to closed session. All in favor? Well, hold on. Do we what? expect action? Do we? Well. well I, do we expect action to be taken afterwards? It's possible there will be action. It is possible. So, so we may be back. Okay. We may be back. So we'll communicate. We'll communicate. Okay. All righty. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. We are in closed session. Let's see, Casey, do I need a motion to come back into open? Yes, uh, Okay. So when he said. All righty. Whenever you're ready for. I don't remember what that is. <laughs> Not a term I use very often. All righty. Whenever you folks are ready, I'd entertain a motion to come back into open session. So moved. Second. Got a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Okay. Um, we uh, are going to take action. Uh, Casey, are you ready to read back on? I am. Divorce? The motion made in closed session was to authorize Moorhead Public Service Attorney John Bolger to commence legal action with Verizon Wireless and American Tower following discussion and, if required, approval by the Moorhead City Council. Any questions on the read back versus what we did? It was for legal action against, not with. <laughs> Something sounded funny there. Okay. I'm going to read it one more time. Okay. Let's, Hold let's on. be sure. It does say with here. One more time. Okay, I'll read that. Authorized Moorhead Public Service Attorney John Bolger to commence legal action against Verizon Wireless and American Tower following discussion and, if required, approval by the Moorhead City Council. Okay. That read back, right? Okay. okay. Good. Um, may I have a motion? I so move. Second? I'll second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. That takes care of that business. Uh, and we, we need to return yes. now to close. New so a motion for I need a new session. motion to go to closed session. So moved. Second? Second. Okay. With that statement to adjourn upon with, with And then to adjourn. Um, Third one, I think. Let's see. No action. No, it's down here. No action is expected, so we will adjourn upon conclusion of our session there, uh, which means we get to say good evening to everybody else. Sounds good. Okay. So, Ralph, you closed? Closed. Second. All, all in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. We're going back into closed session. Thank you very much. Thank you. So those guys just actually waiting to leave.